This is your News Source Evening Bulletin for today, Monday, the 23rd day of December in the year 2019. Here's what we're tracking tonight. Well, just days after Ghana announced the start of oil production, the Exxon Company has announced its 15th oil discovery in Guyana. In a statement this morning, the head of the Department of Energy, Dr. Mark Bino, announced that a discovery was made at the Mako 1 well southeast of the Elisa field in the Stabrook block. He said the discovery by ExxonMobil and his partners come on the heels of the start of oil production. And Guyana is experiencing a truly historic moment that has all the ingredients to facilitate a paradigm shift towards sustained economic transformation. The latest discovery adds to the previously announced estimated recoverable resource of more than 6 billion oil equivalent barrels on the Stabrook block alone. The release said the Mako 1 well encountered approximately 164 feet of a high quality oil bearing sandstone reservoir. The well, which was drilled at 5,315 feet of water, is located approximately 6 miles southeast of the Liza Field, which began commercial production of oil on Friday. According to Dr. Bino, the governments of Guyana will continue to conscientiously and assiduously work to ensure that petroleum revenues benefit all Guyanese through the decade of development 2020 to 2029. The Department of Energy, he said, will continue to be at the vanguard of the efforts through strengthening its capacity and building out the legislative framework to allow for effective and efficient management of Guyana's oil. The U.S. geological discovery will have to undergo further appraisal to determine its commercial value and the resource base. More news coming up in just a moment. It's bigger, it's better, it's back. It's GTT's plus size Christmas promotion. Connect with your friends and loved ones with GTT services to benefit from our biggest ever Christmas bundle of specials and be one of our plus size winners. Visit our website or call 227-9444 for more information today. Big bundles for you. Big bundles for you. Top up a plan, we make a winner out of you. We got a game show for you. Game show for you. Fuel it up and drive. Super 95. Tune up. Fuel it up and drive. Super 95. Tune up. Protect your fuel system. Guyot Super 95 Gasoline gives you more reasons to drive and is available at 56 service stations nationwide. For affordable price, high performance and high mileage, choose Guyot's Super 95 Gasoline. At the most critical life-changing moments, the National Insurance Scheme is here to ensure that your needs are covered. Access reimbursement for medical expenses for various aspects of your medical care. We know that eye care is of utmost importance. Receive assistance with our spectacle care voucher. Visiting the dentist? Dental care is also covered under our sickness benefit services. Offset the funeral expenses of a loved one with costs covered by our funeral benefits. National Insurance Scheme. We're there every step of the way. Lighting is an absolutely important aspect of the festive season, and GPL encourages you to consider these tips when lighting your beautiful homes and businesses. Unplug your lights before you go to sleep or leave the building. Rather than adding more lights to your tree, try enhancing the existing lighting with tinsel, mirrored ornaments, or other reflective items. Before hanging up your holiday lights, check for damaged sockets, plugs, and cords. Replace if damaged. If you plan to string out lights outdoors, be absolutely certain they're marked for outdoor use. And if you use a ladder when decorating outside, stay away from power lines. The same can be said for lights. Do not place them near power lines. A message from the Ghana Power and Light Incorporated. Happy Holidays! Enter the GBTI Quick Cash Christmas promotion and make it a Christmas to remember. You get up to $500,000 easy for anything you want this Christmas. Plus, enter for a chance to win fabulous items for your home. One complete 7-foot granite top base kitchen cabinet, one sectional suite, one five-piece dinette set, and complimentary baskets of goodies. Apply at your nearest branch or online at www.gbtibank.com. GBTI, we see Christmas through your eyes. We are legions of men standing strong, but never too proud to stoop and help someone. We must send a clear signal to all. Do right. Walk in upright ways, knowing that's what being a man is all about. And everywhere. 
that things will only get worse when good men do nothing. Stand strong. Be the one to live right. Welcome back. Let's tell you now that with the announcement of the start of oil production in this country, the ExxonMobil company has indicated that export will begin in a matter of weeks. The company announced that the oil production has started ahead of schedule and less than five years after the first discovery. Exxon CEO Rod Henson. This is a, a, a great accomplishment uh, for ExxonMobil and our co-ventures as well as the country of Guyana. We were able to achieve first oil out of schedule because of really strong partnerships with, uh, with our contractors as well as uh, the government of Guyana. A great many people have worked years on this, uh, on this project. Strong, strong focus on safety, which I'm very proud of, as well as respecting the environment. The Exxon Guyana CEO said production from the first phase is expected to reach full capacity of 120,000 barrels of oil per day in the coming months. So we started up, we, we are now producing, and the process of startup means that you start up the very first well. And what we typically do is we will slowly ramp up production over a series of months. And this allows us to gather information on these individual wells as, uh, and how they produce. And it also just allows us to bring on the processing equipment in a more controlled fashion, just to ensure that everything is done exactly right. In making the announcement of First Oil, President David Granger said the resources from oil production will go towards the transformation of the country, with investments in many of the key sectors, as detailed in his Decade of Development Plan. Petroleum production will be a transformative process in the country's economic development. The petroleum sector will stimulate increased employment and expand services. Your government will unveil a decade of development 2020 to 2029, aimed at ensuring that petroleum resources will be utilized to provide the good life for all. President Granger said his government will manage petroleum revenues prudently to ensure fiscal discipline, financial sector stability, sustainable levels of public debt, and low inflation. Guyanese, I assure you that your government will manage petroleum revenues prudently to ensure fiscal discipline, financial sector stability, sustainable levels of public debt, and low inflation. Withdrawals from the fund will follow a balanced approach, prioritizing investment in public education, public health, public infrastructure, public security, social protection, and other social services, and will support private sector development. Petroleum production has brought the prospects of a higher quality of life closer to our households and our neighborhoods. Meanwhile, the opposition People's Progressive Party Civic has also welcomed the announcement of the start of oil production. And the party sought to heap praise on late President Janet Jagan, who signed the original contract with Exxon back in 1999. In the world of politics right now, as nomination day draws closer, at least two of the recently formed parties have decided to enter the 2020 elections as one entity. A new and united Guyana and the federal united party will be contesting the elections as one. The announcement came over the weekend with Chairman of a Timothy Jonas saying that the small parties will stand a better chance of being a viable third force if they work together. As a question of maths, we know approximately how many independent votes there are available in Guyana. And I think that it is that recognition which has prompted people to ask the question, which is an obvious question as, long as, you, as soon as you consider it. If there are five real third parties, five real new parties, and 30,000, possibly 25, 24,000 independent voters who have rejected the APNU, PPP, and Broglio, and their tug of war. As a matter of maths, each of those five parties will get less than 5,000 votes if they fight among themselves for the independent voters. Mr. Jonas said talks were held with a number of the other small parties, but many have decided to go it alone. The small parties have taken the risk, taken the chance, taken the chance that they will be victimized, that they will be excluded, that they will be criticized. They have made this effort in recognition of the undesirable political landscape perpetuated by the two large parties. So their hearts are all in the right place. 
They're trying to do the right thing for Guyana. On the flip side, their policies are not all the same. So what Anu and United Guyana did, and this is in September, we reached out to small parties to see if we could find an accord, if we could find common ground, so that the third parties could move toward election and present a single face to the public. The ANUC chairman said he believes that the ANUC fed up ticket could offer voters a choice that would see them being represented in parliament as the swing vote. Our minds, Anu and United Guyana, has been considering an issue for some months now. And what we notice is that more and more this issue has been raised in the public domain um, by private citizens, by stakeholders. Um, and we decided that now is the time to address it. <clears throat> in Guyana, most people vote along lines of ethnic alliance. <clears throat> we know this. There is not a Guyanese who will dispute that. The average Guyanese, with the best of intentions and the greatest sincerity, will say that he is voting for the party to which he is ethnically aligned because they are the lesser of two evils. And will go to great lengths to justify why things are not as bad now as they used to be. Or if he is aligned with the PPP, why things are worse now than they used to be. And that tit-for-tat battle, that lesser of two evils battle, um, effectively polarizes the party loyalists, which represent, some feel 70, some feel 80% of Guyana's population. Jonas also said his party is not into making promises that it cannot keep, and that he understands the realities of politics in Guyana. Officials of the Federal United Party were not available for comment since they are out of the country and personal business. It is unclear when the small party coalition will be officially launched. While the Guinea Elections Commission has been able to verify over 60% of the first-time registrants, over the past five days, GCOM field workers went in search of the over 16,000 persons who got registered for the first time during the house-to-house -house registration exercise, which was cut short. News source understands that those who were not verified were found not to be at home during the visit by the field staff. GCOM gave itself five days last week to verify the new registrants. It was a decision that was supported by the opposition, which had some concerns about the number of new registrants for the upcoming elections. During the house-to-house -house exercise, the PPP had called for its supporters not to be part of the process. Some tragic news to report now, a 65-year-old Guyanese man and his 59-year-old wife, who was also Guyanese, died in a tragic accident in Ontario, Canada on Saturday. The two have been identified as Ramnath Sibachan and Padmini Sibachan. They are originally from the Maikoni area. According to Canadian media, the accident occurred along Highway 401 near Cambridge, Ontario. Three vehicles were involved in the accident, but the Guyanese husband and wife were the only fatalities. An investigation is ongoing into that tragic accident in Ontario, Canada. And days before Christmas, a Linden family has been plunged into mourning following the death of an elderly relative in yet another road accident. 78-year-old Julia Cornelius of West Watuka Linden was walking to church yesterday morning when the driver of a speeding car lost control of the vehicle and slammed into the elderly woman. She was rushed to the McKenzie Hospital where she died as doctors attended to her. The driver has been arrested and was reportedly under the influence of alcohol at the time of the crash. Charges are likely to be filed against him before the end of this week. The Ghana Power and Light Company today assured that it remains committed to providing a reliable electricity supply during the holiday season. In a statement, GPL said it has made every effort to ensure there is that adequate available generation, but the inadequacies within its age transmission and distribution network continues to pose problems. The company has promised to make the most of the existing assets through proactive maintenance and prudent operational practices. Maintenance activities have been completed on the transmission and distribution network, but the company continues to ensure that issues that could cause potential widespread outages during the holidays are addressed. It noted that in some instances this could result in localized outages for shorter periods of time.
The company said such outages would be necessary given the vulnerability of the transmission and distribution network. GPL's statement added that every effort will be made to prevent failures and to act promptly if they occur. As a backup plan, GPL intends to bring all the generating units into operation. Already peak demand for this year has surpassed last year's demand figures, reported GPL. Sunday marked the 17th death anniversary of late President and Opposition Leader Hugh Desmond Hoyt. At a reclaiming ceremony at the Seven Ponds Place of Heroes, where he was buried, President David Granger remembered Mr. Hoyt as the man who spurred Guyana's economic recovery. Hugh Desmond Hoyt, our party's second leader and the country's second executive president, led the second economic transformation between 1985 and 1992. He was a man of his times. He was the author of the Economic Recovery Program launched in 1989, which led to high levels of growth during the period 1989 to 1992. He was the motivator behind the economic liberalization, which transformed an inward-looking in economy into a buoyant market-oriented market economy. And he was the visionary behind the environmental protection program that we enjoy today. Mr. Hoyt served as president of Guyana from 1985 to 1992. He served in the post of opposition leader until the time of his death. He was a senior counsel and someone who was well respected as a statesman. Hugh Desmond Hoyt passed away at his North Road home on the 22nd of December 2002. He was Guyana's third president, the second executive one. Across the region is coming up next. They've made a positive impact on the heavy-duty transportation industry in Guyana since they've arrived. Guyanese are amazed at their power, durability, efficiency, and superior handling capabilities. These are brand new trucks, manufactured in partnership with German, Italians, and French companies. They have a powerful reputation for operating under very adverse Guyanese conditions and come with full after-sales service and spare parts. They're the most sought-after trucks today, with over 500 units in Guyana, and they're available in over 100 countries, including South America and the Caribbean. Caribbean. Be smart by brand new ST Hobo Trucks today. Call 608 4998 and arrange for an inspection at ST Truck and Incorporated, Block B, Public Road Covenant, East Bank, Demerara. There once was a man named Stan whose business needed a new plan. Christmas was coming, this much was true. He needed some help but didn't know what to do. Then, fast as a flash, three helpers did come from Republic Bank. They came with some. One had low interest rates, one reduced equity, one with approval so quick and easy. Now Stan is the man and his business is booming. Christmas is good and he is winning. Reach more customers and boost your business with a Republic Small Business Loan today. Only for this Christmas. Get 20% off on educational tablets. Get the B-Link HD8 with 180 plus full version educational apps for students in pre-K to 5th grade, it's perfect for homeschooling. Get creative with the Adu Tab Pro 10.1, designed for professionals, teachers and higher education students. Whether you are an architect or artist, there is an EduTab for you. EduTab tablets were designed for Caribbean students. Order online, or, at Zoom Online Shopping on Middle Street, Georgetown. Ask for Miss Green. Get yours today. Special terms and conditions apply. Coupon cannot be used in conjunction with other coupons. Orders may be subject to local taxes and import duties. Discount price is promotional for online orders only and does not include local nor international shipping. Purchase limited to two device per household. My name is Sonia Sears. I'm from Arnaputa. I'm 42 years of age. And I'm the treasurer for the Arnaputa Processors Friendly Society Group. And I'm also the supervisor manager day to day. Well, over the years, as we started in the snacks program, we move on by selling our local peanut butter to villages, like villagers, shop owners, and so. And then we extended to our Georgetown market. We've been going to expos, and that's how we've been promoting our peanut butter. And our main selling point is that it's local, 
The peanut is locally grown in the village. It's made locally. We don't add preservative and we don't extract the peanut oil. So you have the real local peanut butter. And our brand name is Aranaputa Valley. Since we, have, we now have an internet system in our village, um, progress has been made so far in the sense that we were at the expo in Latem recently and we did some photos and we set up a Facebook page but we haven't activated it yet but through my Facebook page we, we put up these pictures and so and so a lot of people have been commenting and asking like how they can get it like I have a friend in Pomeroon she wants me to send down like try a few tubs and sell and so and now that we have the connection they tell us what they want and quick time we could get it like if they send a message now to me I go to the Wi-Fi now they say well Sonia we need 30 pounds of nut butter I can go and tell one of my ladies look tomorrow we need to make 30 pounds of nut come come out and they would come and we get it done put it in a box send it down to them go back to the Wi-Fi tell them nut butter on its way on the bus they pick it up next day Taking you across the region right now, the World Health Organization has reported a significant drop in cholera cases in Haiti, saying that international action led to a 60% decrease in cases worldwide in 2018 compared with the previous year. The World Health Organization says this points to what the UN agency described as an encouraging trend in prevention and control in major cholera hotspots such as Haiti, Somalia and the Democratic Republic of the Congo. The decrease, the organization said, in several major cholera endemic countries demonstrates the increased engagement of countries in global efforts to slow down and prevent cholera outbreaks and shows the vital role of mass cholera vaccination campaigns. Cholera is an acute diarrheal infection which is caused by ingesting contaminated food or water. Turning now to Honduras, at least 16 inmates have been killed in a fight between rival gangs at a Honduran prison, less than two days after deadly violence at another jail. Officials said guns, knives and machetes were used in the fight on Sunday at the El Pervenir prison, east of the capital. On Friday, 18 inmates were killed and 16 hurt in the northern city of Tela. There has been a wave of prison violence in Honduras, where prisons are notoriously overcrowded. The government declared a state of emergency in the prison system last Wednesday, transferring control to security forces. And finally tonight, international news. A court in Saudi Arabia has sentenced five people to death and jailed three others over the murder of the journalist Jamal Khashoggi last year. Khashoggi, a prominent critic of the Saudi government, was killed inside the kingdom's consulate in the Turkish city of Istanbul by a team of Saudi agents. The Saudi authorities said it was the result of a rogue operation and put 11 unnamed individuals on trial. A UN expert said the trial represented the antithesis of justice. A report by the UN expert back in June said Khashoggi's death was an extrajudicial execution for which the Saudi state was responsible and that there was incredible evidence warranting for the investigation that high-level officials, including Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman, were individually liable. The prince denied any involvement, but in October he said he took full responsibility as a leader in Saudi Arabia, especially since it was committed by individuals working for the Saudi government. And that's your news source evening bulletin for tonight. I'm Gordon Mosley reporting.